now it becomes easier for you to understand your uh, default store, the core default store that are already available in WordPress. So let me just tell you which are those. So mostly the ones which are used, uh, you have core, uh, you have core blocks, you have core block editor, uh, you have core edit post. You also have some of the other ones as well, which is core notices. Now there are others as well, but these are some of the main ones that you would probably want to use. Okay, so I'm just going to show that to you as to you know how they work. And the best part is that I don't have to code for this. They are already available uh, inside of WordPress. So I can get access of these inside of WordPress inside of my console. Okay, so let me show that to you. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is start with my core. Okay, so let's say wp.data dot select. So remember the way we created our custom store, which was food, we have a default store available from WordPress, which is core. Okay, let's hit it and see what's there inside of it. So remember these are selectors, so we can get data using those. We have got get current user, entity, so many things available. So we're not gonna focus on all of them for now. Uh, we'll just focus on one of the methods, which is basically get authors. I wanna know what are the authors available on the site. So on my site, I have three authors available and these are the authors and I can get all of this data uh, already available. Now you must be wondering how is WordPress getting all of the data? Well. Behind the scenes, WordPress is actually making a REST API calls, okay? Some of the data, it already gets it beforehand and it's ready for you to use. But some of the other data, uh, you know, you may have to make a REST API request yourself uh, in WordPress. Okay, great. So you have this uh, get authors, you can also get hold of taxonomies. So I can do taxonomies. You can see on my site, I have these taxonomies available. Okay, uh, similarly, you have current user. You know, if I wanna know what is the current user right now. So again, I remember we used to do by PHP, but this is JavaScript and the best part is that in JavaScript, I can get that information. So I'm logged in as root and you can see in this entire object, I've got all of these data available. Okay. Uh, next up, we can also get the post type uh, details. So I can do get entity by kind. And I can put post type here. And I can get all of the post types here. Okay. The block editor. So we have another store uh, available called block editor. Okay. So we can say select core block editor, okay? And if I wanna know what are the different blocks available, I wanna know the count of it. So, so get the current block count used in the editor. So how do I get that? So what I can do is I can say get global block count. And now you can see that in the current editor, I only have one block used. If I go ahead and add one more block over here, let's say I add a paragraph block, Paragraph, and then if I hit the same, you can see now that I've got two blocks of uh, two count as two blocks used on this particular uh, page. Okay, awesome. And uh, besides that, you can also know which is the block that's currently selected. Like if you select this block paragraph, it will also give you the information of that. So let's say. If I want to get that information, I can say get selected block. And you can see it gives me all of the block information because I've, I've currently selected the paragraph block. So it, it's going ahead and telling me that the name of the block is a paragraph. It's also giving me the client ID, which means each of the blocks have their own client ID. And you will know soon that there are a lot of things that you can do with the help of these uh, block ID. Okay, you also have these attributes available. In case if it's a custom block, you have defined your own attributes, you will have them as well. If they are default uh, attributes, like in this case, they will be available as well. You can get information about inner blocks uh, here as well. Okay, uh, next up is 
you can get information about yeah if you want to get the block ids list uh, array in order they appear in the editor you can also get that information okay so let me show you that again uh, select core block editor i'm just going to copy this so save time on that okay so if you want to get get block order you can see there are two blocks used first and second and you are getting the their list of the ids uh, in the same order as they are okay if our and next thing Uh, let's say that you want to get hold of a single block. So as we discussed that we can make use of the block ID. So let me get the block ID of one of these blocks first. So I can take this. And then if I want to get a particular block detail with the help of its ID, I can do that by using the, the selector, sorry, uh, yeah, selector called get block and putting the ID over here like this. So you can now see that I'm, I can actually grab hold of the, a particular block with the help of its ID and I get all of the information of that particular block uh, using this method, right? Okay, then the next one is your blocks. Uh, so wp.data. So next store we have is core blocks. Core blocks. Okay, if you want to get all of the blocks on the site itself. So previously we learned about how to get the blocks that is there on the current editor. But if I want to get to know what are the different blocks available, uh, you know, throughout the site, how do I get that? Well, you have that information inside of blocks. So you can type get block types. And you can now see that these are all the blocks on my site. So it includes not only the core blocks that are already there by WordPress, uh, given by WordPress, which is paragraph, image, heading, and all of that. But I also have my custom blocks also available. So these are the list of all of the blocks that are available. So you can get that information. Then if you want to go ahead and get all of the categories uh, related to blocks, how do we get that? Well, you can use the same store, which is core blocks, but you have another selector available called get categories hit it you can see that these are all of the categories that are available uh, for those blocks now what are those categories well when you come over here and if you try to select any block uh, you can see that these are the categories you have common you have formatting layout widget and if you notice on the left hand side these are the same ones you have common you have formatting layout widgets embed uh, all of these, right? Um, it'll be interesting for you to know as well that you can register your own categories as well. So sometimes when you are working on client projects, uh, you may want to go ahead and put all of your custom blocks in a specific category. So you can go ahead and register your own category and you know register the blocks in that category as well. But this is how you can get all of the categories which are there on the site. Okay, awesome. Uh, well, next up, uh, next door is basically edit post okay so let me get rid of this make it a little small in fact i'll have to put this down better okay for the next one up uh, we have available is your edit post okay so again we can do wp dot select sorry data dot select and the name is core so this is one of your default stores edit post Okay, and there is a method available. Sometimes if you wanna check whether your sidebar is opened or not, and we want to uh, you know, perform some action, this is that. Uh, you might be thinking, when do we actually need it? Well, we had one of the scenarios in one of our client projects wherein uh, our client actually wanted to use some uh, heading block and we created, we created a heading block, custom heading block for the client but the font size that he was using was really, really big. Okay, it was so big that we could not fit in other content over here. So what we had to do actually was that uh, we had to you know, put a condition that if the screen is not full width, uh, then you know, the, size, the font size in the editor should be this much, it'll be reduced so that others, other content can be you know, fit inside of that. 
So there could be scenario like that, something similar. So at that point of time, you, you may want to know whether your sidebar is open or not. Okay, so for that, you can use a method, and um, this method in JavaScript itself, and it's called is editor sidebar opened. So currently you can see that it's true, it's opened, right? And now it's false because I closed it, right? Again, it's true, okay? And um, also, if you wanna know if the publish sidebar is open or not, so in case if I publish the post, this is a published sidebar, if you wanna know that, you can also get that information using is published sidebar open. And you can see it's open, right? So you can get that information. Uh, you also have some of the preferences that you can get. Uh, for example, wp.data.select, again, core, edit, post. You can get preferences. Okay, so if you want to know about different preferences that are available, you can get all of the information here. Okay. All right. Uh, the last one I want to discuss about is notices. Now, there will be some times where you have to, you are creating a, probably a custom blog or you're performing some actions with JavaScript and you want to create a notice uh, on top, right? Uh, so, you generally have to write your own code, but let me tell you, it'll be interesting for you to know that we already have uh, you know, a method available that can uh, provide us with the uh, publishing the notice. And we have that available in a store called core notices. And as we discussed, if you want to dispatch an action, I can just use dispatch. Name of the store, which is core notices. This is a default store, WordPress provides. And I have a method called create notice. Okay, and you can put success if you if you want to put that like a green box and just put any message you want, like here is our notice. Oops, there's something wrong somewhere. Okay, this is notice is not not notice. Okay, let me just correct it. There you go. Can you see now that here is our notice, right? So you can print notice, of course, uh, you can use the subscriber to keep listening to it and perform an action basis on whenever you need to, okay? So these are our core uh, blocks, the most commonly one used, okay? Uh, okay, uh, let's talk about updating the data. So, so far we've learned about how to get the data. What if I want to update something with the help of, uh, you know, these uh, selectors? Can, we, can I actually do that? Well, we already know that we have uh, different selectors available and we have different dispatch methods available that we can use in WordPress. So let me show the, these to you. Okay, so let's say I'm gonna go to here. So let's put the title of the post like this is my current title. Now if I want to go ahead and change this start title, I can do that again. So I'm gonna copy this to save time. my new title, can you see? <laughs> Isn't that a magic? <laughs> so it has actually gone ahead and updated the title just with this dispatch method of WordPress. Isn't that wonderful? All right, you can also change the excerpt. Uh, you can change the featured media if you want to. So with the, with the help of this edit post method, you can actually do a lot of things, okay? All right, now next is, subscribing to any chain. So like I had explained to you uh, in our example, that you can actually subscribe to a change when you were creating your custom store. Similarly in WordPress also, you can subscribe to any change. For example, if your post is saving and if you wanna do something, you can do that. So let me just copy this and show it to you. So do something console log warn. Okay, so what we're doing over here, uh, we are checking if the post is saving or not. And then um, if it is, then we are going ahead and just consoling something out of it. Okay, so let's just hit it. 
Okay, and now I'm gonna go ahead and type something and then I'm gonna save. So you can see that it's saying saving, right? Okay. Awesome. Uh, there is another example when you are typing something. Hit it. Now I'm going to check if it actually does the job. Okay. So I'm going to start typing. Can you see? Whatever I'm typing is going ahead and giving me that information. Right? Okay, so this is something that's possible when you use the subscribe method. And now let's talk about the differences between the WordPress data module versus Redux. We all know that it's built atop Redux, but what are the differences? Well, many of the same core, core principles are used. For example, both uh, in WordPress data module as well as in Redux, they use single store object. Uh, state is changed by emitting an action and making state changes with the reducers, which are basically uh, the ones that I shared with you. And many of the same API methods naming like dispatch, subscribe, create store. So similar naming methods that have been used. So these are one of the similarities. What are the differences? Well, it differs in establishing a modularization pattern for creating separate but independent stores. Okay, um, high order components were created to complement the dis distinction. And if I had to compare side by side uh, in Redux, a subscribe listener is called on every dispatch regardless of the state change. In WordPress module, subscriber uh, is called only when the state changes. In React Redux, a map to state to props function must, be, must return an object. However, in uh, WordPress data module, a with select mapping function can return undefined if it has no prop or inject. This might be like too much information for you uh, initially, but uh, you know when you actually start learning, these information will be pretty useful to you. Okay. All right. So with that, I uh, you know conclude the WordPress data module, and now I'm going to hand over to Mr. Ajit, and he's going to talk about more uh, further. Okay. I hope you guys are having fun. You can put whatever your feelings are in in the chat box. Okay, great. Soren is enjoying it. Nice. <laughs>